talk about Jesus. Thank you. Well, we have a, a great crowd of all our, our guests, our family here tonight. And tonight we also have a very special guest, Maria Saraco. And she is going to talk. Uh, she's a kind of expert on Garabandal. But last night, I promised you something. You know, no matter where you go today, if you buy any Bible, um, if you buy all the three different kinds of Bibles, Catholic Bibles, you're going to have inclusive language. Uh, I think it's diabolical to change the Word of God so that it doesn't even have the same meaning. Now, I may stand alone in that opinion, but I'm willing to do that. Because I don't think anyone or any group has a right to deprive you of the right kind of Bible. Do you think they do? No. So, I don't think so either. <coughs> If they have to have an inclusive language Bible to mix themselves up more than they are now, <laughs> that's fine. But I don't think they have a right to say you can't buy any other Bible except inclusive language. That's kind of communistic, you know. Maybe it's worse than that. Well, let me say, a few of us did a few little things, and here is the Revised Standard Version 1970, the most beautiful translation that's ever been written in ordinary, wonderful, good English. It, it's, a, it's in beautiful print. It's not too small, not too large. And we put it in blue for our lady. Did you ever see a blue Bible? No, you ever saw a blue Bible, either red or black or white. So we want everybody to know this is a special Bible and it's blue. How do you like that? <laughs> now I happen to have a small amount of these, 5,000. <laughs> I happen to have a small amount. The contribution is $20 for softback, $30 for hardback. I didn't get too many hardbacks because I didn't think too many of you had $30. <laughs> So when you write, make a choice. I don't have it, I'll send you what I got. How's that? I won't send back your $10, though. <laughs> <laughs> so if you send 30, if you give a donation of 30 and you, get, you ask for hardcover and we don't have any more, you can't make these overnight, you know? I'll send you, with all my love, a softback. <laughs> For the same amount. <laughs> it doesn't make sense, but it makes Angelica sense, see? I think a lot that way. I said everybody crazy, especially bookkeepers and accountants and, and all the rest of them. But it's a beautiful, it's called the Ignatius Holy Bible. And I, I want you to study. It's not a study Bible. In other words, it's got, it doesn't have a lot of explanations or footnotes but it's in English. It's in English. And the spirit will make up for the footnotes. It's a very beautiful, beautiful trans uh, uh, translation. So I'm going to push this. Why? Because I need the money. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> now, 
anybody out there have $150,000, then I won't buy, mention money for another three months. <laughs> Bibles are what you need. The money is what I need. <laughs> Please order your Bible. Because with this Bible and that wondrous catechism, you have everything that's in the church. Everything. And so I kiss it for you. First that God gave it to us, that we're able to get a good English Bible. And I say to all of you who put out only inclusive language Bibles, thinking no one would ever buy another one except inclusive language, eat your heart out. <laughs> We have with us tonight Maria Saraco. And we're going to talk about Garavandala. You know, we had here um, Ted and Maureen Flynn on the Thunder of Justice book. We had Michael Brown that wrote the, the last hour, the final hour. We had Francis Fukushima from Japan on Akita. In November, we will have Father Gobi. And tonight, we have an expert on Garabandala. And the reason we're doing this is nobody can talk about a chastisement uh, with full knowledge, because we don't know really what it is, although a lot of people say what it is. We don't. Excuse me, we don't know when it is. But the world is a kind of giant Sodom and Gomorrah. It's, it's worse than before the flood. Abortion is so bad that you can't even think about it. And so license to sin is everywhere, and there seems to be very little of of the real Lord and Savior we know, Jesus and his mother. And so what I'm trying to do is not put any approval on any visionaries or visions. <clears throat> Only the church can do that. What I want to do is just keep you informed that you pray for conversion of the world, that you, you consecrate yourself to our sweet Mother Mary, and that you have to put aside some of these worldly things, because one day he'll come suddenly. And then you have to ask your question, now, what then? And so tonight, please welcome Maria Saracco. Thank you, Mother. With that little introduction, I'm sure there's a, a, a lot of people who are not acquainted with, with the, the visions uh, of uh, Garabandal. Would you tell us when they began and to whom they, our Lord or Our Lady appeared? They began on June 18, 1961. Four little girls uh, called Conchita, Mary Lowley, Jacinta and Mary Cruz, 11 and 12, were playing in a little village called San Sebastian of Garabandal. Mm -hmm. And this is a very primitive area in the north of Spain in the Cantabria Mountains. Mm. Their village happens to be the last village in the area. There's nothing beyond Garabandal. The road leading up to the village at the time uh, of the apparitions was treacherous, dangerous, and uh, if a little car was going up, no one could go down, and vice versa. Mm. Uh, the whole entire village was rock cluttered, about 80 stone houses, only about 300 people lived here. No books, no newspapers, no magazines, no TV, and no bathrooms. 
It was really, really I could primitive. do without the TV. I don't know about, about the, the other part. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it was. No telephones, nothing like that. No yeah. modernism, nothing. Yeah. And many of these people had really didn't even know what existed outside of their village. They led a very um, difficult life because they had to work in the fields if they wanted to put bread on the table. And this was what life was like in this village. One day on June 18, 1961, the four girls thought it would be a good idea to go and steal some apples. And of all people, from the schoolmaster's tree. And they were little tiny green apples. Remember, it was June, so they weren't ripe. Yeah. And they took some and they filled their pockets and they slipped over to a very rocky path that led away from the village up to uh, a ledge with a, a cluster of nine pine trees. And there they were sitting on the rocks, eating, having a good time, and suddenly they heard a loud clap of thunder. Conchita became very frightened. She said, our guardian angels must be very sad and the devil must be very happy because we have eaten stolen apples. So she begins to pick up little stones and throw them on her left side, thinking she was going to ch chase the devil away. Now there's no cloud in the sky, nothing. Clear day. Suddenly she falls on her knees. Her head goes back, she's looking up, and the other three girls, believing that she's become ill, get ready to run to call her mother. But they didn't get very far because the same thing happened to them. And when they became themselves again, and they headed in the direction of the village, the people could see that they looked different. And they said, what's happened? And they said, an angel, the angel, we have seen the angel. So that was the very first apparition. They didn't know who this angel was. He didn't talk. But he appeared several times after that. In the meantime, the word spread throughout the surrounding areas, and people were coming, mm. and they wanted to see what was going on here. The fa pastor finally, by the way, he didn't live in the village. He had to come up on horseback from the next nearest village. He took care of several villages. His name was Father Valentin. And he said to the girls, I want you to ask the angel what his name is. And so they did. On July the 1st, they said that they wanted to know what his name was. And he said that he was Michael the Archangel. Now the angel had been carrying a sign beneath him, but the children couldn't read the words that were written on the sign. And when they asked him about this, he said, tomorrow, on July 2nd, Our Lady of Karma will come, and she will explain the meaning of the words that are written on the sign. The girls also said they really didn't care about looking at the words because the angel was so beautiful, he had them completely captivated. Well, the next day, oh, there were lots of people there, priests as well. And our Blessed Mother came, just as the angel, angel had promised. Michael the Archangel was on one side of her and another angel who looked exactly like him, but who has never been identified, was on the other side of her. And over the angel on the right, the children described what they believed to be a giant eye, the eye of God. And at this time, our Blessed Mother explained the meaning of the words that were written on the sign. And she told the children that she wanted this message to be kept secret until the following October the 18th, 1961. And at that time, it was to be re revealed. It was a message for all humanity. What the Blessed Mother said was many sacrifices must be made, much penance must be done, 
we must make many visits to the Blessed Sacrament. But first of all, we must be very good. She said the cup is filling up, and if we do not change, a very great chastisement will come upon all humanity. Now, at this point, the girls were always stationary in one place. But people were coming, oh, by the thousands in this little They probably place. didn't know what chastisement meant, did they? Well, our Blessed Mother explained everything, not everything, but everything they needed to know in order to get this message across. Actually, the Virgin Mary not only appeared as Our Lady of Carmel, she came with the brown scapular mm -hmm. over her wrist, sometimes by herself, sometimes with the infant Jesus. But she didn't just come to tell them this. She actually came, Mother, to give us, the whole world, a catechism lesson. That's what she came for. She actually lived in this village for almost four years, for about four years. She taught us everything that we should have been practicing, should have been living, I should say, mm. before her appearance. And the reason why she came is because we're far away from what, we were talking about the Holy Bible. Yeah. Everything this teaches us, everything that the church has taught us. And the new catechism. No? Right. Yeah. We're living far, far away from that. But she wanted to prove that this was really her that was appearing. Yeah. And before you know it, the girls were following her throughout the streets of the village, going into every home. They always knew when she was coming because of an interior call that they described as three joys. The first joy would be slight, the second more intense, and the third so strong that they'd have to run very quickly to wherever the place was they knew Our Lady would be waiting for them. The doctors separated the children. They were all watched carefully. They lived in different streets, and they were watched to see how if often, they... How often did Our Lady appear? Was it every day? or? Were the messages cate cate uh, catechesis, or were there special messages for the world? She gave four messages. She gave one in 1961, that one. The final one was in 1965 when I was there. Actually, she sent Michael the Archangel to deliver that message because she said later, during her final apparition, that it grieved her to tell it to us herself. Mm. What was his second message? The second message was during, uh, was given only to Loli and Jacinta. And they wrote it down and they said that the Blessed Mother was very, very sad. And what it consisted of was Our Lady told them, the world is living as though they're not expecting a chastisement, as though they're not expecting a punishment. Nothing has changed, and in fact, it's gotten worse. And the girls are pleading with everyone, please, everyone, be good. Our Lady tried to hide her sadness, but please, we could see she was unhappy. Please, please, be good, everyone. And that's what it consisted of, both messages. Mm -hmm. And the final message. Well, what, is that the third message also? The yes, second and the second third? Second and third were very With similar. With the call to be good. To the call to be good that we were just completely disregarding her first message. Right. Totally disregarding it. No one was paying and any attention. what was the fourth? The final message. Our Blessed Mother said, because my message of 1961 has neither been lived nor has it been made very much known in the world, I will tell you, this is the last one. Before, the cup was filling. Now, it is overflowing. Many cardinals, many bishops, and many priests are walking the path of perdition and are taking many souls with them. Less and less importance is being given to the Holy Eucharist. 
You must avoid the wrath of God by your good efforts. You must ask pardon with your sincere soul, and God will pardon you. And she says, it is I, your mother. I love you very much and do not want your condemnation. Ask us sincerely, and we're going to give to you. You should sacrifice more and think of the passion of Jesus. That was her final message given on June 18, 1965, through the intercession of the Archangel Michael. I'm going to explain the word perdition. Uh, but who, uh, it, it, um, perdition means to lose one's soul. I don't think maybe even in 1961 many people would understand that. But this constant living in a state of sin. Um, we're not talking here about imperfections. We're talking about very serious sins uh, against the Ten Commandments. The, the lust, greed, envy, jealousy, murders, adultery, abortion, homosexuality. We're talking about a state where uh, people accept all these things as a way of life. That they no longer are sensitive to, to God's will or, or the, way, the way of Christianity or the way of, of, of God. No, it was kind of a hard saying, all of it. Very and it's sad. very similar, though, um, to the children of La Salette. Mm -hmm. I mean, they said the same thing, only uh, much more uh, explained right. than, than this. But there were, um, at what point in these four years uh, did the, warn the, 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 uh, the revelation of the warning and the miracle come? Conchita is the only one that knows what the miracle will consist of. And, and why is and it going to be one? Date. Why is it going to be a miracle? The miracle is coming in order for the world to convert and to do God's will, to fulfill his will. When Conchita asked if this was uh, mostly for her or the children or the people of Spain or what have you, are selected few, or just Catholics. Yeah. Our Lord said that it would be so that the world would fulfill his will, that the whole world would convert, and also that Russia would convert as a result of the Garabandal miracle. Now the warning, Conchita also knows the date of the miracle, which I'll go into more in detail a little later. But the warning of Garabandal was first shown and told to Loli and Jacinta. There were, I'm getting ahead of the story. Yeah, that's okay. But uh, there were two nights that are called to, uh, the two nights of the screams. And the first night, Loli and Jacinta were shown not only the warning, which is the very next worldwide event to take place before the miracle, they were shown at the first night of the screens, as well as, as the chastisement, which will take place if the world does not change, does not fulfill the messages. So what, what I think will take what, place yeah, after the miracle. Yeah, what we're saying then, or what the Garabandal message is saying, that there shall be a warning, a worldwide warning, where everybody, uh, that everybody will see. Uh, but at that point, something special is supposed to happen during that warning. The whole world will be in complete terror. It will be a thousand times worse than earthquakes. I know, but isn't there a revelation of, of, uh, of the soul? Absolutely. Yeah, that, well, that's what I want to explain today. If they don't get that, they're just going to be scared of a giant earthquake, you know? Yeah. So no, what, I'm not saying it's an earthquake, Mother. But it's going to be worse. Uh, worse than a yeah. thousand earthquakes. But the purpose is, and that's what you have to understand, everybody, all of you, all of us, the whole world, every man, woman, and child, will see themselves as God sees them. The state of their soul right, will be revealed right, to them. To them. Right. right. And what they'll feel in their hearts will be worse than sorrow. 
and what they will actually feel within their hearts depends on the state of their soul at that moment. So the best thing that anyone can do who's watching this program now around the world and all the audience sitting here is to straighten out their lives, get themselves in the state of grace. If you're Catholic, go to confession. If you're not Catholic, repent. We need to tell God we're sorry for yeah. everything we've ever done in our whole life. Everything. Come clean with God. We can't fool him. That's what we need to do. We need yeah. to promise him that we will try to lead a good life, do his will every day of our lives. But you know, it's really a, a great grace, Maria, because very few, if any people, really know themselves. And, and you can prove by it if somebody comes to, up to you and says, uh, why are you so impatient? And the first thing you say, I'm not impatient. <laughs> <laughs> Who said I'm impatient? I'm very calm. Well, something wrong somewhere, you know? You don't know you're impatient, see? It's like an alcoholic. He says, oh, I can handle it. I can handle it. I know how much I can take. He's already drunk. <laughs> so we don't know ourselves. And see, at that moment, this is, I, well, we're going to be scared. But listen, some of you don't listen until you're scared. But that's not the point. The point is you're going to have that great grace of knowing how you stand. It's like a mini judgment. You know, th that's, this is what Our Lady told Father Gobi. It's a mini judgment. And what a grace that is. It will also be a purification. Yeah. Purification to prepare us for the miracle, which will not be worldwide. The warning will be worldwide. The miracle will take place. Yeah, it's going to be worldwide because I'm going to have television cameras on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the miracle can be filmed, photographed, and televised. And I've always said at my slide lectures that I give around the world, uh, when people say, then we can see it on television? Yeah. And, I, and I say, well, I don't know. That depends on who's going to be there to televise it. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Are we going to need satellites, Mother, up there, something? Are we getting, no, that's not a problem. That's oh, not, great, no, no, great. That's not a problem. Well, well I, I want to get it straight in my own mind, because we're going to get all kind of phone calls, and people are going to write letters, and I, I don't want to appear more stupid than I am sometimes, you know? Oh, come on. However, what I want to do is to say, okay, number one, Our Lady asks for prayers. She asks for conversion. She asks for sacrifices and visits to the Blessed Sacrament. Number two, if, if we don't repent, and so far it doesn't look like we have, then there will be this wonderful warning. Wonderful, terrifying. Yeah. Well, it's okay. We, well, it, you know, as long as we have an opportunity to be saved, I look forward to it. You say, are you nuts? I hope not. I just realized what a grace it is for a dear, an act of mercy for our dear Lord. A lot of people do things they don't know they do. That's what it is. See, people yeah. say to me, oh, God is a loving God. He wouldn't do anything like that. He's merciful. He's also just. This is not just a message of fear. It's one of love and mercy that God is still willing to give us another chance right. to make our lives well, that's better. That's what's so exciting about this whole thing. It is. Yeah. Did, did Loli or, or Jacinta ever explain what the warning was? Do they know what it is? Loli has described it, yes. She said that it will be like a... Um, uh, well, le let me put it this way. I want to try to say it exactly the way she said it. Yeah, okay. In a certain moment, a certain time, not a single motor will operate. You mean and if you're driving your car, you're going to stop dead? Think of the airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going home by airplane? That, that's what I think of. Uh, that's what I think of because I'm constantly traveling by yeah, plane. Yeah. 
from to one place to another. Well, is so, there some kind? My of, Lord's not just going to stop all the motors. Is there? Is, I mean, you, you got to do something else, huh? Well, that's going to be the first part. That it, not a single motor will operate. The second part, we will look for water. A terrible heat will come. We'll look for water and not find it. In our desperation, we'll even attempt to kill each other. But in that moment, our strength will fail. We'll fall to the ground. And that's when God will make us see that he is the one that did all this. At that, that, that moment, that's when we're going to see it. Now, from Conchita, that's from Loli. From Conchita, she says it's like the collision of two stars that don't fall down. And she was asked by someone, uh, in 1965. See, she first learned of it on January 1st, 1965. And in 65, uh, she was asked, well, could it possibly be a comet? And she said, well, I don't know what a comet is, but if it's from God, yes. If it's from man, no. The warning will come directly from God. No one will be able to explain it. And every human being on the face of this earth will know at that moment that it is God that caused this. Even the atheist will know. They may try to wash it away after it's all over with or try to explain it away. But in that moment, even the atheist will be aware that it's from God. What a, what a wonderful opportunity for conversion for the worst sinner. And yeah. Conchita also says something else that's interesting, that it will uh, it'll be like a fire that will not burn our flesh. That's also very interesting, I find. Yeah. So now, the, did they say anything about what the miracle might be like? I don't. Do they know? Have they seen it? The uh, only Conchita and one other person, the fifth That's visionary a priest, of Arabindal, isn't it? Right, Yeah, the priest saw it. A thirty-eight-year-old Jesuit priest. His name is Father Louis Andreo, and on his third visit to Garabandal, he was. In the, uh, in the little area of the pine grove. Remember I said there were nine mm -hmm. pine trees? Right. By the way, people seem to think that that re is representing the nine choirs of angels. Could be. Because Our Lady asked that a small oratory be built there in honor of Michael the Archangel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, the, uh, the girls were up there, and Father Lewis was there taking notes. He was studying these girls. He was a brilliant theologian but very much devoted to the Blessed Mother, consecrated to her. And, and suddenly the people heard him say, miracle, 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 miracle. And the Blessed Mother told the children, Father Lewis is seeing me. And she seemed to be saying to him, you will soon be with me. Well, when Father Lewis left the village uh, that night, let's say it was about 3 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. when he left, with his friends, and he was sitting in the back in, in the car that they were in, all he kept saying was, oh, what a sweet and lovely mother we have in heaven. Oh, what a sweet and lovely mother we have in heaven. How happy I am, how full of joy I am. This is the happiest day of my life. That's all he kept repeating. And with that, he made a slight coughing noise, sound, lowered his head, and died. No one could explain his death. Mm -mm. He was 38 years old. He'd never been sick a day in his life. He probably died from a kind of a static joy. Exactly. Yeah. That's what everyone says. Mm -hmm. No one can, can figure out what did this priest die from. His brother, Father Ramon, who was living by the way, he has uh, three. He has three brothers, all Jesuits at the time, and Father Ramon, who was living in Spain, who now lives in California, uh, said, "I really believe that mm -hmm. at the moment of my brother's death, that he was very happy." Do the do the do the does Conchita or uh, whoever it was who saw do, does she know what it's made? What will you will you see it? Will you touch it? What is it? Of what? Of the what? miracle. She didn't say that you could touch it or couldn't touch it. What she did say was that God will leave a perpetual sign at the place of the miracle. 
and it would be something that would remain there until the end of time. And she said, that also can be filmed, photographed, and televised, but not touched. She also used a comparison. She said it would be like a column of smoke never before seen upon the earth. But that doesn't mean, Mother, that that's what it's going to be. Well, we, I mean, we, we describe things, yeah, yeah, we, sometimes yeah. there's some things you can't describe, you know, so you That's right, the, words, compare, fail, the yeah. words fail them. They, they found it very difficult to describe. Well, everybody things. that goes there on that day is supposed to be healed, aren't they? That's right. At the time of the miracle, she will announce the date of the miracle eight days before it happens. I'll tell you. <laughs> And I'll tell you, Mother. <laughs> thank, you, thank you, thank you, thank you. If I'm still alive, if I live through the warning. Now, oh, yeah. getting back to the warning, okay. the warning is not supposed to kill us. I'd like everyone to understand that. Yeah, it's, it's not, not a, so, yeah. It's not supposed to kill us, but if people die, it's going to be caused by the emotion within them. So, but it will not cause death in itself. So if I live through it, after I've seen the state of my soul, which I'm sure is not going to be lily white, uh, you know. I'd run the confession if I was all of you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, Conchita said the best place for her to be, she hopes that she'll be in front of the Blessed Sacrament. That's a blessed place. Y'all come to our chapel, we'll hide you. Right. <laughs> So now, uh, Father Lewis, by the way, his body is going to be found the day after the miracle, completely incorrupt. He will look exactly as he did on the day he died. Mm. Now, as I said before, uh, there was no resident priest in the village. And Michael the Archangel began bringing invisible mystical communion to the girls. and. But the people couldn't see it. Only they could see it. And they didn't realize for a long time that There's that a they picture of one of the girls that looks like the host on her tongue. Exactly. Yeah. Now, what happened was that Conchita was pestering the Blessed Mother, do a miracle so everybody will believe us. They don't believe us. Well, I can e see why. Even yeah. though the people were witnessing fantastic phenomena. Here the girls are walking uh, through the village with their head back, their eyes looking up. Uh, running at high speed at times. The people couldn't keep up with them. It was impossible. They'd crash on their knees on those jagged rocks. People thought, oh my God, their bones must be broken. They were never hurt. From the pine grove, the Blessed Mother would lead them down the rocky path, backwards, running at high speed every day, Mother. It didn't matter if it was sunshine, raining, sleet, snow. Whether it was daylight or 3 o'clock in the morning, it was always the same. Sometimes the jagged rocks would pull their shoes, their boots right off their feet. They didn't realize it. They were still running. And people had to fetch their shoes for when they became, went into the normal state. And at that point is when they realized it. There were so many phenomena that can't be explained. The girls yeah. levitated off the ground. And uh, who can explain this? Well, how, how, did, how did you back, feel when you were there? Well, I saw Conchita in ecstasy, and I knew what I was witnessing was yeah. not natural. Yeah. Here, yeah. this girl was surrounded by people and television cameras. It took place at night. It lasted about 20 minutes, about 11.30 to almost midnight, 20 minutes of, let's say, more or less. And this girl didn't realize that these people were there. I mean, when the girls are in ecstasy, they see nothing except the vision. They don't go anywhere that except the vision. That happened at Medjugorje, at Bernadette, at Lourdes. It happens to all of them. Well, they only followed the vision. They only did what the vision told them to do. And so here, what I saw, these bright TV lights, you can see what your studio is like here, right? The bright lights. Who can look directly in those lights for 20 minutes? The doctors couldn't explain how she didn't suffer permanent eye damage. They were flashed directly in her eyes. Hmm. She never blinked, nor winked, nor showed any signs of distraction. To me, I could see clearly this was not a well, natural you must have thing. Well, you must have felt Our Lady's presence. Huh? It was St. Michael who appeared. 
But yes, I did feel. Now, why do you say micro reveal? The, 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 the miracle? final message. The final, the final message. message, which I just spoke mm -hmm. about. But you know the part that impressed me the most? Right. It was not being a witness to Conchita's ecstasy. It was the message. The message, the message. Mm -hmm. When the Blessed Mother said the part about cardinals, bishops, actually, we weren't told that. We were told many priests were walking the path of perdition. And I said, oh my God, how could the Blessed Mother be saying such a thing about her consecrated sons? I didn't understand that at all. I believed yeah. it, there was no doubt about it. But I was always raised to believe that just because a priest was a priest, he was gonna go straight up. But you see, that happened at Fatima. At Fatima, uh, Russia was a struggling country. And, and, and when the children said that she would spread her errors throughout the world, this was uh, confusing to the people because they were a country that really had nothing and seemingly were powerless. Right. And suddenly, but you see the prophecies and visions like this are usually prophesied something way ahead. And because we expect it now, we lose the message. Well, you, know? you see, the Blessed Mother, the point of the Blessed Mother coming to Garabandal was not just to warn us that we were going to be in deep trouble, mm -hmm. but she came to warn us about the church. In 1961, mm -hmm. in the very beginning of the apparitions, our Blessed Mother told the four girls that the day would come when they would contradict one with the other and even deny that they had seen her. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't understand this. How, how could the Blessed Mother be saying that we're going to deny seeing her when we're seeing her? And Loli even said, if they held a gun to my head, I'd have to let them shoot me. There's no way I could deny yeah. seeing you. Well, of course, the witnesses knew what they heard. They didn't yeah. hear what Our Lady said, but they heard yeah. the responses of the girls. I hate to interrupt you, but we do have some calls. And we, you realize we only have 15 minutes left? Oh, my gosh. Oh, I got so much to cover I here. I know. I know. Well, let's just have one call, and then we'll see. Hello? Hello. Where are you from? Massachusetts. And what is your question? I was hoping your guests would tell the audience who Joey Lamangino is, and I was wondering whether Joey was still active in promoting the Garabandel message. Joey is a wonderful apostle for our Blessed Mother, yes. And uh, they, he, he doesn't really lecture anymore since he got married, but he does travel occasionally. And they keep you from very, lecturing? Very, uh, he's got <laughs> children now, you know. <laughs> His, you know, okay. his wife is the boss. Oh, okay. <laughs> and his state one. in life comes yeah. first, right? Yes, yeah, sure. That's always number one. That's but right. Um, okay. I've never met his wife, but I understand she's a wonderful yeah. person. Yes, and they do pu publish a magazine as yeah. well. Do we have any more calls? Do you, do you want calls or do you feel you have something I'd like to finish what I was saying. Go ahead. Because this is really important. Everyone has to know this. All right. To understand what's happened at Garabandal. So the Blessed Mother responded to the girls when they, when, when they didn't understand about why they were going to deny. Our Lady actually gave them the reason. It said, you are going to do this. You're going to contradict one with the other and even deny that you've seen me because you are going to pass through the same confusion as the church. Ooh. In 1961, there was no confusion in the church. Everything was fine. Uh, vocations were uh, flourishing. It appeared everything seemed to be healthy. You hardly ever heard a breath of scandal or a priest who, uh, uh, you know, leaving. And she actually was trying to warn us and using the girls as proof. And sure enough, when the girls saw Our Lady, they had no problems, they believed. When they stopped seeing her, they couldn't remember clearly. It was yeah. as, lo as though they had divine amnesia. But you see, the, the church is in that kind of confusion today. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So they went one by one to the bishop at that time. There have been mm -hmm. five bishops. Now we're on the sixth bishop since the apparitions began. And they said, because they're honest children, I have not seen the virgin. And they were worried they were deceiving the whole world. Yeah, that they would be. I have not seen the virgin, but she had on a white dress and a blue cape, <laughs> and this was the message. Yeah. And the bishop said, how can you say you didn't see the virgin, yet you're describing her? 
And they said, I don't know. They yeah. still don't know to this day. Yeah, but see, that's, that, uh, that, uh, some of the old prophets in the Old Testament had to live out either the punishment that people were going to have or they literally lived it out. And, and this is what I think that there is great, as you know, great confusion in the church. Some of our people in our audience are asking, what was the miracle of the Eucharist? What was that one time that well, we saw when, the host? Yeah, when Conchita was pleading with Our Lady, do a miracle, do a miracle, uh, the archangel, she said, okay. And the archangel Michael told Conchita that she had to announce two weeks in advance that he was going to give her communion and it would actually become visible on her tongue for everyone to see. So sure enough, she comes out of her house, everybody shoving and pushing and so on, and she goes right around the corner on this little narrow street. She crashes on her knees right in front of a barn door. Does this sound familiar? Like 2,000 years ago yeah. when Christ was mm -hmm. born? Uh, she crashes on her knees. Her head goes, uh, well, it was back, but her tongue is extended. And suddenly, the host appears on her tongue. Mm. And Michael the Archangel tells her not to swallow until Our Lady of Carmel arrives. And when the Blessed Mother comes, she says, even now there are those who still do not believe. And uh, of course, uh, that also appears in our documentary, uh, Garabandal, the Eyewitnesses. Many other things appear in this as well, and I hope that everyone will write to me. And do if we have, like to a, have? Do it. we have the address? So, do we going to put it on? Okay, you're going to have uh, Maria uh, address uh, Saraco on on your screen. I would uh, I would encourage you to to order this from her because it's uh, I think it's important for you to read it because of the four messages. It's a very simple address. It's Post Office Box, P.O. Box, 40678. That's not hard to remember. P.O. Box, 40678. It's on your screen. Pasadena, California, 967. No, whoa. 97678. No, zip code 97678. Maria Saraco, P.O. Box 40678, Pasadena, California 97678. You got a lot of 678s in well, there. Well, the last three numbers of the zip code are actually the same as the last Post office, office box. Office. Wonderful. And I represent St. Michael's Garabandel Center for Our Lady of Carmel Incorporated. And uh, it is a, an approved federal and state okay. nonprofit organization. Good. So. We have a call. Hello? Hello? Where are you from? I am from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And what is your question? <laughs> okay, my question to Maria is um, I know that in depth she would know more about uh, the visions and about the messages of Garam Bandal, but is she familiar with the other? Um, the other visions in Medjugorje and Batania, and in more than we would know, I mean, the average person, do some of these things still reveal itself in the other apparitions as well as uh, her being an expert in, in Garabandal visions? Uh, this is a very frequent question at my slide lectures. Uh, it always comes up. But in all truthfulness, I've been forbidden to speak about any apparition not approved by the Catholic Church. And the reason for that is, as I explained, about the confusion that the girls were told about by our Blessed Mother, that if we begin to unite unapproved apparitions with Garabandal, which is also unapproved, and the other apparitions go down, they're going to take Garabandal down with it. And that's the reason. I can speak about approved apparitions, but not unapproved apparitions. So I have to be obedient and just kind of pass over that, if you'll bear with me. Yeah, we have another call. Hello? Hello, Mother. Where are you from? Uh, from Baltimore, Maryland. And what is your question? 
Um, well, you spoke a lot about the, it's for Maria, uh, you spoke a lot about the uh, warning and um, and also that Our Lady appears as Our Lady of Garb, uh, Mount Carmel. Um, the, um, the comets that are going to hit the planet Jupiter on July 16th also happens to be the feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And I was wondering if you thought there was some kind of connection. I mean, everybody feels that the warning is imminent, and I was wondering if this could be maybe the beginning of something. Well, let me explain something. Uh, first of all, we publish a newspaper that's called The Vigil, The Message of Garabandal, that's sent all over the world upon request. All anyone ever has to do is send me a large business size envelope that's double stamped, and it will be mailed out to them. On the condition, though, that you pray for the supernatural success of this work. Now, in the next issue, I'm planning to put a disclaimer in here because I happen to know and I've heard of so many things about uh, the event that's supposed to take place next month, this comet hitting Jupiter. And uh, people are actually publishing uh, newsletters and advertising that uh, that they're going to go to Gar take groups to Garabandal in order to be there for the miracle on April the 13th at 8.30 in the evening. And uh, don't believe what people are saying like that in print. No one knows the date of the warning. Mary Lowley does know the year. That's all. She knows also that the miracle must happen within 12 months of the warning. We also know that the miracle must happen in the month of April on a Thursday at 8.30 in the evening on a feast day of a martyred saint for the Eucharist. But whether or not it's going to be this comet, I can't tell you. And I shake in my boots at the thought of people going there only because they're expecting a miracle if it doesn't happen. Can you imagine? Well, there would, there, there would be, there would make any sense if the warning doesn't come anyway. Exactly. Well, the warning so. must come before the announcement of the miracle, yeah, but so. how close will it be? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Will it be a few minutes before the announcement of the miracle? I don't know. I do not know. But anyone that tells you, uh, for instance, in, in some places it's published that the warning's supposed to happen at 2.30 in the afternoon. That did not come from the Garabandal visionaries mm -hmm. at all. That is not so. Mm -hmm. Maybe they got it from someplace else, but not from the Garabandal visionaries. What we want to say now is that Our Lady has been appearing many, many places. Uh, everything that she said would happen in Rwanda is happening, and she prophesied that to some young boys uh, 13 years ago. And it's happened. Our Lady is telling us something. She is our mother. Like all mothers, she's saying to all of us, be careful. A lot of you are going in the wrong direction. You have forgotten the Lord God. You no longer teach the truth. The Eucharist, the presence, the sign of my son on this earth is maligned and blasphemed and not taught as real presence. And so she, she has been warning us everywhere, at Medjugorje, La Salette, um, at Garabandal, um, Akita, many places. Uh, she's saying, be careful, or the Lord will have to shake you up. As a good father, he would have to shake you up because he loves you. The importance is not put on how he does it. The importance must be placed upon the realization we need to go to confession. People will laugh at you like they laughed at Noah. That poor man spent a hundred years building that ark. Can you imagine what happened every time it rained? They said, there he goes again. It's raining, it's raining. And his wife said, you old fool, look at him. It's my rendition, so don't look for it in the scriptures. <laughs> but see, that, 
See, you say, well, you call Wolf so many times, nobody goes. Well, that's true, but Our Lady keeps coming. She keeps warning. And then there will be a time when we're going to say, I wish I had listened. And what do we say? All you need to do is change your life. Stop great sin. Go to confession. Repent. Say your rosary. That's all she's asking for. And you know, all of this could be averted if we did that. So that's what we're saying. We've been saying it now for the last six months. Nobody knows the time or the hour or the place. The important thing is get your soul prepared. Remember this Bible. Have one in your home. Also remember this network because summer is here. Everybody's gone on vacation and the donations went <laughs> So I need $150,000 in 40 days. You know, four zero. I need either 140,000 people or one man that's got the whole bit. Either way, I'll take it. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Bye now.